South African streets in ruins. At least 12 people have been killed and dozens of stores destroyed in days of rioting. Most of the businesses here in Pretoria are owned by foreigners and it's these immigrants that the mobs have targeted. Basil Onegbo is from Nigeria. He's been living in South Africa for 14 years. There's nothing to salvage from his car dealership. His livelihood up in smoke. There's no brotherly whole love there. We are all one Africa. We are all the same. We are the same blood. We are not, I'm not even, maybe I'm saying, you can say that maybe I'm a white man or this. No, we are the same blood of, of Africa, you see. But some locals don't share that opinion. They think foreigners are given preferential treatment and say they're taking jobs that should go to South Africans. There's no evidence to support these claims. But many people are struggling to find work and the economy is in bad shape. South Africa has narrowly avoided a recession. Last year, the economy grew just 0.8% and unemployment is at nearly 30%. That's almost 7 million people out of work. Analysts say frustration is fueling myths about foreigners. Politicians have also been accused of scapegoating immigrants to distract from their own failures. South Africa's president has condemned the violence. No amount of anger and frustration and grievance can justify such acts of wanton destruction and criminality. There can be no excuse for the attacks on the homes and businesses of foreign nationals, just as there can be no excuse whatsoever for xenophobia or any form of intolerance. But xenophobia in South Africa isn't new. In 2008, at least 62 people were killed when rioters targeted foreign nationals. Again in 2015, non-South Africans were attacked by mobs with at least seven killed. And there have been reprisal attacks. South African business owners have been targeted in Nigeria and there have been protests in Zambia. President Ramaphosa sent envoys to these countries in an effort to ease tensions. Is South Africa in denial about the existence of xenophobia? And what is the government doing to make sure these attacks don't happen again? Haider Abasi, The Newsmakers.